All right, well, I'm gonna go ahead and get us started. Um, we're gonna, if everybody can just mute except the presenters, that way we are recording, so just wanted to let you guys know that. Uh, there's a, quite a few of you guys from and gals from uh, Wisconsin, so that's awesome. Welcome, Wisconsinites. Um, so my name is Corey, and I am the curriculum director here at STEM Education Works. Uh, there's some familiar, familiar faces out there, and I'm sure we'll have some more people dropping in. We actually have quite a few that are registered. Um, I am really excited about today's webinar. It is really a, a different format uh, than what we have done in the past. Oh, that's okay. Whoever just, I can't see the name, but whoever that was, don't worry about it. It was no big deal at all. Uh, so this is a really different format than what we usually do. If you've been at our previous monthly webinars, it's usually kind of me doing a tutorial on a, on a technology or talking about a, you know, a classroom technique. So this is really different. We're going to be sharing live builds of a couple of different STEM projects that we think you're gonna really love. Uh, but before we get started, let me introduce our company. If you haven't met us before, STEM Education Works is an educational technology company. We specialize in several really awesome technologies and then we provide the wraparound curriculum and support for each of them. Uh, we also partner with Purdue and Indiana Manufacturing Competitiveness Center or NMAC to bring you design and innovation studios and those are dedicated spaces, sometimes we call them maker spaces, uh, with technology and curriculum to bring STEM to your students. So the purpose of today's webinar is to announce our brand new partnership with Brown Dog Gadgets. And some of you may already be familiar with their uh, popular Bristlebot. I'm just curious in the chat, I, I think there's a thumbs up feature, right? Is there a thumbs up? Yeah. So if you can give me a thumbs up if you've done anything with Brown Dog before, if this is something, um, that you have used before, give me a thumbs up. I think it's under react, reactions. Anybody familiar, paper circuits, okay, awesome. I actually think paper circuits is one of the more challenging kits. Nice. <laughs> Anybody else have some experience with Brown Dog? Oh, hey, Christine. Yes, actually, here you go, Trisha. <laughs> I have all of them right here of it. All right, so it sounds like some of you do have some experience. Uh, that's awesome. We're going to be showing you several of their STEM kits today, and then we're going to go through live builds of two of our favorites. Now, don't forget to stay until the very end because we're going to be giving away one of each of the kits that we carry. Uh, today, you'll also be meeting several of my teammates here at STEM Education Works, so that's kind of a new thing as well. It's usually just me. Uh, so I'll introduce them now, and they can give a big wave. Um, we've got Spencer. He is our customer success specialist, and I can't see you all because you're off my screen now, so hopefully you're waving. Uh, Jake, I'm not sure if he's in, but he's our curriculum outreach specialist. Uh, we have Justin. He's our production specialist. And then Ty, he's our marketing manager. And Christine, she's the president of our company. And several of them will be helping to lead our session today. And with that, I'm actually going to hand it over to Spencer. And Spencer's going to introduce you to our first kit for today, the Bristlebot. Hey, Spencer. Hey, Corey. I'm, very, I'm really excited. Um, like I said earlier, I got to talk to a couple of you that came in earlier. Um, I am the customer success specialist at STEM Education Works, but I also taught STEM for about six years. Um, where a company or at a school where, um, you know, I kind of build it from the ground up. Um, one of my favorite, you know, things to get was the Brown Dog Gadget. So I'm really excited to talk about them today. Um, I'm going to be talking about the bris Bristle Bot Kit. Um, and really in these, they're kind of nice because they come with everything you need in here. You can get a four pack, a 10 pack, a 25 pack. Um, and the reason kind of for those numbers, if you did a small after school program, perfect for four maybe or 10. You know, 25 that could fit your classroom. And if you want more, you can always kind of combine 25 with 10 or four, whatever you need. Um, really what I like about these, Corey, um, like I said, it comes all in this kit, exactly what you need. It comes with the Bristol, the pipe cleaners, some googly eyes to make it fun, the motor, the adhesive little piece, as I would call it, and the battery. So it kind of comes with everything in here. Um, but I am also going to tell you things that I would do in my classroom because I think this is a project you can really do with about any grade level in the elementary. 
Um, one year, my PTA sponsored this project. I did it with K1, and it was something that they could take home to their parents and say, hey, here's what we did in STEM class, or here's what we did in science class. And, you know, it's just a hands-on approach to get their parents excited about new programs or things you're doing. Like a lot of you said, you're in a library setting. Well, something that could be a grab and go for a library so that you're able to do it, you know, either all together or give bags out to different kids for them to do for the, with their families. So hey, really Spencer, excited can I, about it. can I jump in real quick with that? Yes, absolutely. Of course, my heart, and I'll tell you this in a minute, but my heart is definitely school library uh, and, and public library work both. But I, I think these are great for uh, doing either summer programming with the kids or uh, sending individual kids home as well. So it's, uh, they're really a great option for that. Yeah, and I mean, they can be used in so many different spaces, like you're saying, Corey, after school, in school, libraries, boys and girls clubs, whatever it might be. But today, you know, I could sit here and talk about that for a really long time, but we're not here for that. We're here to watch me put one together so you kind of know what it's like. And I'm going to give you some tips and tricks. Um, and Corey might, you know, come in and talk and say she knows something or ask me a question. Um, and, it's, and that's kind of how it's going to work. So I'm going to lay my computer down. Um, can we see all my items in front of me right now? We yep, we got awesome. So the first thing and the most important thing is this Bristol. And you might be saying, well, Spencer, how do I put it together? It comes with this awesome guide that looks much like this, where it tells you step by step exactly what to do. And what I love about this is it can be really easy for anyone to use because there's pictures. You don't have to know how to read necessarily. You can tell exactly what they're doing. But I'm gonna give you some tips and pointers as someone who has used these with kindergarten and first grade to help you avoid some issues. The first thing, like I said, you're gonna do is grab your uh, bristle. Um, and as you can see, the kids might wanna play with this a little bit, maybe let them feel it, talk about it a little bit. I always like to talk kindergartners through things because everything's very new to them. Um, some of the older grades, you wouldn't have to do this as much. The next step they want you to do is to put on the adhesive. And as you can see, I kind of peeled back both sides. I would recommend doing this ahead of time um, as the teacher. That way you're not having kids struggle because it is a little bit harder to bend these back unless you have nails. Um, another thing that we notice, Corey, um, we talked about this earlier, is getting something underneath it, maybe like a little, you know, paper clip or something to get it up. If you don't have nails, something to make it a little easier on those kids. So really what you're going to want to do is take it and you're going to want to try to put it in the middle of this Bristol box. So I took the both sides off. And as you can see, mine's kind of here in the middle. If you have any questions, just let us know in the chat and Corey can stop me. But really, this is kind of nice here to have this. Don't let the kids sit here and touch like this a bunch. Oops, it's going to take away the stickiness of it. Um, and that's the last thing you're going to want to do here as we put more and more items on. So the next thing you'll notice that we're going to put on is the motor. And it has two different wires at the end, um, which we'll talk about what those mean. But on the other end, it has a little um, half looking weight that's going to turn. That's what allows the motor to vibrate and this to become a, you know, a bot that actually moves around a little bit. So we're going to want to put that on the back half. So where it's kind of flat is where I would put it. And we're just going to stick it like that. And that's what we got so far. OK, very simple so far. Um, really for the kids, this is something you could probably do very fast. One thing I might say, um, because this was kind of my teaching style and it might be yours as well. Hey, you know, whisper to your neighbor, what do you notice? Is the bot moving yet or why is it not moving? You know, so you can talk about, you know, inner energy here and circuitry and why circuits work. So the next thing I do is I'm going to pick up the battery and I tell the kids right away something a lot of kids don't notice on a small battery like this. And I'm going to try to get close enough that you guys can see it. There is a little plus button on this side or a little plus. So that's the plus side of the battery versus the other side, which is our negative. And some of these kids might just take this and stick this on. We do not want to do that. We want to have our negative. On the bottom, and not only do we want to have our negative on the bottom, but we want the red wire to go underneath it. So I'm going to put the battery down first, actually. And then I'm going to put the red one kind of underneath it a little bit. And you can notice right now nothing's happening, right? That's because my blue one's not touching the positive. A positive needs to touch a positive and a negative needs to touch a negative for this to work. And this is a very simple but hands on way to teach kids exactly that about electricity, right? And they might be scared saying like, oh, it's going to shock me. There's not enough voltage here to shock you. And that's what kind of makes it fun. 
And I think it's even cool just for like a STEM kind of set of um, state of mind here um, with critical thinking, have them put that wire on there and they can see it runs, but it doesn't want to stand up. It wants to fall over if it runs long enough. So if I take this wire, kind of go like this, it falls over. So one of the ways we're going to solve that problem is what we're going to do next. We're going to take the two pipe cleaners that are inside of there. And what I always tell kids is if you kind of make a little X and then just twist once or twice, now we have our bristle bots arms. And where that is going to go, it's actually going to go between kind of the wires there, just like that. And then I kind of like to bend mine down a little bit, like so. So now we have the little arms that are going to allow it to balance. So if it did run right now, it would run perfectly fine. But how much fun would that be if we didn't, you know, add something fun like the eyes? So just like the adhesive, you want to peel this back a little bit. It's going to make it easier on those little kids and make it easier on you if you get to do this ahead of time. So I already went and kind of peeled back half of it and kind of put one on the right. You might have crazy kids that maybe want to do a one-eyed you know, bristle bot, and that's perfectly fine. Let them be creative and have a good time with it. But I'm going to do two so it kind of looks like the one in the example. And really, that's all you have to it. But like I said, it's really cool to be able to teach the kids that, you know, electricity has to pass through something. So we're talking a lot about, you know, not only electricity, but conductors of heat. So things that are conductors of electricity, things that can take on electricity versus insulators, things that can't allow electricity to pass through. So these wires obviously allow the electricity to go through. And once I kind of adjust my wires here, it'll allow it to run. And I even have some friends over here we made ahead of time. So this one is running right now. And then I even have another one over here. So it's kind of fun if you can get them all going at a time and kind of go against each other, do some almost like what I would call like battle bots with the kids, you know, Sometimes this wire too, you got to bend it down a little bit so it sticks. Sometimes you can see here as I'm letting it go, it won't run. And that's kind of a problem solving things for kids to do too. How can you get it to run without having to put your hand on it? So like right there, I kind of bent that wire. Now that one's running like crazy all over the place and it's going to fall off the table. But very simple that this project allows you to learn about something that's so great as electricity, but very simple for those younger kids and give them kind of the stepping stones of how they can learn about those future things in electricity. And that's what I love about this project. Hey Spencer, I, feel... I have to share with you uh, the comment that Frank put in uh, mm -hmm. in the chat. He said he does these every summer at his steam camp and the kids love it. And he says they have hex spot battles with them and races down ramps and they even uh, had made them with giant tub scrub brushes. So that's I absolutely awesome. love that. I think that's fantastic. It's awesome. I, yeah, giant tub. I love that idea. And see, that's that's why I think it's kind of nice about these uh, brown dog gadgets. A lot of times you get, you know, different kits and you have to do X, Y, and Z. And even Corey, you talked about too, how they have different data points from middle school. Um, you want to talk about that a little bit more? Cause I yeah. know you've done it in the past. So it's really one of the nice things with brown dog gadgets. And if you've ever, some of you have used it, if you've gone to their website, they actually have uh, lesson plans and they, they have them mapped out for elementary, but they also have them for middle and high school, even for the bristle bots. And it's really fun because uh, they'll basically bring in data collection. So you have to redesign your bristle bot for distance. Um, can you keep it in a straight line? Uh, you can actually redesign. So they're, the littles are using the pipe cleaners as the balance in the arms, right, for the, for the monster. But you can very easily have the kids designing other whatever, you know, maybe, maybe it's wings for an airplane or, you know, whatever. You can redesign what that looks like. So really, really fun. Um, it's very simple, so it, it doesn't take, you know, a really long time. If you're maybe you're a specialist teacher and you only have 30 minutes with the kids, this is a really great uh, yep. fun activity. Yeah, and we just had the, you know, another comment come in there, and it's such an opportunity for learning and problem solving. That's why I like about them too, like all the things we're talking about, the extension, you know, go beyond electricity, but that application state that we're looking for as teachers. In a lot of different states, you know, electricity, I know in Indiana is a plus plus standard. So we know it's going to be something that they have to know to move on to that next grade. And I think in Indiana, it's fourth grade, you know, where some states it might be a little bit different, but very similar concepts. So Bristol bots, absolutely love them. And I'm so glad that I was able to build a couple for you guys today. I might even go over to the corner and start playing with them now as we kind of go to do the next thing. <laughs>
Awesome, Spencer. Thank you so much. That is fantastic. Um, so as I said at the beginning, I'm Corey. I'm going to take over the next kit. And um, I spent 25 years in education. So most of that was in middle school. Uh, the last eight years, I was in middle and high school library. So uh, in my last school, I ran a makerspace. I had 950 students. And my responsibility was STEM instruction for fifth through eighth grade. So I've you know, been there, tried these things out as well. Um, and I have a lot of fun with, with that middle school that middle school age. Um, so I'm actually gonna be sharing with you our second kit, and that one is called the Solar Bug. So here is the Solar Bug kit, and it includes all the materials that you need to build uh, several solar bugs. So this, the smaller kit uh, has an for four, and I'm gonna show you some examples of some finished solar bugs. So here's our ladybug, and our crab. So they're absolutely adorable. And I'm gonna share with you, hopefully this works, I'm gonna share with you real quick because it is now not sunny outside and I also can't take you outside to see this. I am gonna show you a quick video of what this looks like uh, when you're outside. So hang on one second, I'm gonna try to share this with you. Okay. Two of our teammates went outside and filmed our ladybug. Let's see if I can share it. Spencer, you may have to come or let me know if it's not showing. Are you yes. able to see it? Um, right now I can see like our screen for the um, recording, like the webinar. So it might be, now I can see it. Mm -hmm. Oh, you did? Okay. Right. When the, oh, okay. Is it there yep. now? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna play this just real quick. Then. So that, that is the solar bug. And okay, is it back on me now? All right, I'm gonna switch my camera so I can show you the build. Let's see. Okay, there we go. All right, so how do you build one of these little guys? Um, each kit, I'm going to show you what the kit looks like when you open it. Each kit comes with activity cards that include all of the instructions for the build. Now, you can also get even more detailed instructions online, but these are uh, quick and easy to, to get you started. So they have an activity card with step-by-step -step instructions and pictures like Spencer showed you a minute ago. And the other thing they have in here are the templates for the bugs. So they're actually already right here. You can... Um, trace and cut them out or photocopy them. Uh, you can also go online and print these out as well as the legs, the antenna, uh, the wings. So they're all here. So the first thing that we're going to do is that we're going to pick that template. So this is one of my favorite things about this particular kit is that it's really, really easy to tie into what you're already doing in your classroom. So if you're using themes of some sort, you can choose your template based on your theme. Uh, if you're working on specific, like maybe you're studying the life cycle of caterpillars and butterflies, uh, you can easily use that. Uh, you can even have your kids create, or you can create a template yourself in something like Canva uh, and print those out for your students. So you know maybe you're doing sustainable energy and you want the kids to design race cars. So there are all kinds of uh, curriculum tie-ins here that you can do. But you're gonna pick that template and you're gonna have the students cut them out and then color them and design them however uh, you want them to do that. So I've put this one together. This one was the butterfly. I'll show you what it looked like ahead of time. So here was its body. And then it also provided the wings and then the, the antenna. And I just cut them out and then put them together. So that's what it looks like uh, when the template is put together. So we're gonna go ahead and set that aside for now. And now we're gonna build the solar cell. 
So here's what the solar cell looks like. And we're going to start by identifying these silver squares here. So we want to make sure the students are only working with these little silver soldered areas here. This is where we're going to be attaching the motor wires. We won't be using the copper ones at all. So we're going to take a motor, comes in your kit, and we're going to take off the adhesive back. And we're going to place it right here on our solar cell. Okay, now we're going to take our wires and we are going to attach them to those silver squares. And we want the negative, the red to go to negative and the blue wire to go to positive. Now, somebody mentioned at the beginning the maker tape that Brown Dog Gadgets has. So here's a, a spool of that. So we're going to take two little pieces of the maker tape and we're just going to make sure that our, whoops, that our wires are connected. I had another little piece here. And like Spencer said, this is a, an opportunity you might want to take to prep ahead of time. Little fingers, I mean, my big fingers had a hard time with this, but uh, your little, little fingers might have a hard time taking off the adhesive backing. Okay, so I've got my wires taped down now. So now I'm going to get this, um, let's see, I'm going to take this piece of tape and I'm going to place it on, this is double-sided sticky tape that comes with our kit. And I'm going to pl place it on the solar cell. And then I'm going to go ahead and take the adhesive off of the back of the double-sided tape, I think. There it goes. And here's my butterfly. And all we're going to do Is place that on top. There's a little square that you can use as a guide. Just want to make sure, obviously to us, maybe not to your kids, that the solar side is, is aimed up. And then the last thing we're going to do is flip our bug over, or mine's the butterfly, and we're going to repurpose some googly eyes, and they're now going to become rattle feet. So instead of googly eyes, they are rattle feet. And we're going to put these on the bottom. And now we have our completed solar bug. So when we place these now in direct sunlight, they will take off. And again, this is a really fun activity that can be modified in so many ways. So I can see bug battles and I can see data collection for speed and direction. Um, and again, you will find some detailed lesson plans to get you started. And that brings us actually to our last kit that we're going to highlight today. Uh, Justin is going to share our sewing kit with you. Uh, Justin, are you there? Well, Chris, sorry, real quick, you had a question. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me jump back hey over. I can't see this. Yeah, it says, do, does it charge or does it need to be in sunlight all the time? Okay, that's a great question. It needs to be, it needs to have sunlight to work. We actually did it inside with a window and that worked just fine. So it does need sunlight, but it doesn't necessarily have to be outside. And then so like the other part of the question, does it charge? Like can it hold that energy and then run for a while? Uh, it did not for us. So once we came inside and there wasn't direct sunlight, it was gone. Yeah, which I think that's the way they've kind of set it up to be. They kind of want kids to see that, hey, when it does have sunlight, it does run versus when it does not. Just kind of simple, renewable or different forms of energy. Yeah. Okay, Justin, are you... Are you there? Yes, I am. All right, so, Justin, tell us what you have. So, hi everyone again, I'm Justin Walker. Um, so today I have for you the sewing circuits kit, and this is what it looks like. And again, just with every other brown dog um, thing we sell, everything you need comes in this kit here. You won't need anything extra. Um, if you need anything extra, it's more just you want to make it more fun for yourself. So let's just get into this a little bit. Um, the sewing circuit kit comes in just a standard pack or a class pack. Uh, the standard is built for about one student, and then the class pack we are saying is going to be about 25 students for you. 
Um, so also along with these sewing circuits is this takes a little bit longer than the two other activities um, just because you're going to be sewing a couple of things together. So for this one, we're not going to show the demonstration, but we kind of already have one made up. And I just kind of want to describe some of the parts that come in it and uh, what we're kind of working with here. So what we have here is the material. So the blue I'm working with, that is a felt material that we have, and uh, we actually just cut it to size. And this is going to be um, my bracelet for today. So we have the felt material. And what we have done here is we started with sewing on the, fast the fastening pieces right here on the ends, um, just so you can be able to fasten our bracelet together. We have some conductive thread, which is being hidden a little bit by this tape, but we are just holding it down for demonstration purposes. So there's some conductive thread under um, this little silver tape. We have a giant LED here to kind of show you the um, circuits are working, um, so you know everything's working. Then over here we have our battery pack and our battery hold, or our battery holder and our battery. So how this kind of works is after you kind of pick the material, pick what you're going to make, you're going to use these kind of the fastening, the fastening tools to um, connect everything with the thread. And you're going to come out with, oh, let me turn this around for you guys. And as you can see, the LED is now lit up with our conductive thread. And so again, just with every other kind of um, gadget we have from Brown Dog, um, these are just kind of cool little things you can do and turn it into whatever. You can sew this onto a shirt, you can sew this onto a book bag, um, anything really the students can kind of think of they want to do with this is um, worth it. So that's just a little bit about the sewing circuit that I wanted to show you guys. Um, any questions, feel free to throw them in the comments, but that's all I have for you guys. Awesome, Justin, thank you so much. I did want to share with the sewing circuit, it, it does take a little bit longer. Um, so and also it is sewing, but there is an option with the sewing circuit kit that you can use the no sew. So you can actually uh, glue them down instead of using the needle and thread. So that is an option for your younger students. And also there are some really adorable templates on browndoggadgets.com. Uh, one of them, and this is really, if, if you're a Stranger Things person, then you already know that Stranger Things, the final season is coming out tomorrow, I think, or the next day. But they have uh, an example of the Stranger Things Christmas lights coming on, and they actually do the LEDs across the letters, just like it does in the show. So that's Friday. Yes, thank you, Amber. I'll be watching it with my child, my son. Um, so they have that as an example. They also had one that had R2-D2, and it would light up. Uh, there was a backpack thing that, that that would hang off the kid's backpack and light up. There was one that was a heart rate monitor that you use that you use with um, a micro bit actually it connects with another technology and then it would take a pulse and then the shirt would actually light up with your pulse. So some really really fun things. Um, for the ages for the sewing kit, I would just say they're needles. So be, I mean, for me personally, I, I'm always even a little cautious with my middle schoolers and needles. But as long as you're being really careful, you probably could, you know, third, fourth, fifth grade. I'm not sure. Spencer's probably better at the the littles than me. But I would say kindergarten one, two, I'd probably stick with the no. So yeah, yeah. yeah. I, would, I would say and like, you know, it's one of those things if you get parent permission or um, someone put there in the chat, you know, they do a third grade sewing lesson, then absolutely yeah. this is something you could add in. It's a whole new dynamic for it. Um, and really, um, like in the beginning, I talked to Sean, who said he's doing steam. This is a great steam project because you're adding a lot of cool art components you know where the kids are really personalizing something um but yeah it's just one of those things teach them how to use it correctly they're going to use it so yep and it's a great year i love that that's an awesome end of the year project that's really cool that is my favorite probably my favorite of the kits it is a little more extensive but it's just i can i just would go crazy with that with cheap t-shirts from you know the dollar store or dollar general and then have the kids design their own t-shirts and have them light up with the leds so i think that would be would be awesome um okay so let's see where does that take us we are now actually going to throw it to ty who is going to share some closing thoughts with us about brown dog gadgets okay. Hi everyone, um, my name's Ty and uh, I was just waiting for Corey there. We're actually in the same room, so we have to make sure one of us is muted so you don't hear an echo. Um, hopefully everyone can hear me okay then. Um, but I just wanted to uh, just recap uh, the kits that we have um, 
and we actually didn't show one of the kits today. That's the uh, paper circuits kit. It's very similar to the sewing circuits kit. Um, it uses paper. Um, and all of these kits are available on our website. The email that you got um, that you actually signed up for this webinar um, has access to all of our kits on our website. Um, and I can also post that link in the chat um, once I'm done speaking here. Um, but uh, the all those kits, um, like was like uh, Corey and Spencer and Justin all talked about, they're great to teach circuitry, um, and they're also very affordable. Um, the Bristlebot, it, it comes in a variety of different uh, packs. You can get a four pack, a ten pack, or a twenty five pack, and then the Solar Bug also comes in a four and a twenty five pack. Uh, the sewing and paper circuits are a little bit different. Um, you can get a classroom pack or just the standard pack. Um, and you can see those contents, everything that's included on our website. Um, the other applications outside of just, you know, the the obvious using them in class. Uh, summer's coming up, school's good, getting out. They're great for STEM camps and summer school. Um, also library summer programs. Um, this is also uh, becoming more popular there. And then um, when you go back to school in um, in the fall, there are after school programs you can use this for as well, because um, the nice thing about them is that you can make them short projects um, so you could get them done in an hour or less. Um, one last thing unrelated to Brown Dog, but the rest of our webinars. We've been doing these for the past few months since the beginning of the year. Um, and uh, we're gonna pause for the summer, like hopefully all of you are going to be able to do. Um, and we're gonna resume our web monthly webinars back in September. So um, keep an eye out on um, when we will be resuming those and what those topics are gonna cover. Um, we're gonna spend some time uh, building out what that schedule is gonna look like. And then um, lastly, um, if you read the invitation, you'll know that there are some winners that we're gonna have um, of some Brown Dog products that we will send to you. Um, now, it looks like uh, I checked, we already um, took the list of people who signed up and we, auto, or we random generated um, all of our winners. Now, looking at the list, one of the winners is here. Um, so that's Cindy Henderson. Um, and if you can just uh, message the chat just to confirm that you are here, um, Corey will uh, randomize the rest of the winners because we want the people who actually showed up to be able to win. So um, congrats, Cindy and uh, Corey. I'll let you go ahead and announce the rest of the winners. Absolutely. Cindy, since you were the first winner, um, you get to pick which one you want. Can you just take a note of this while we're doing this? Yeah. Cindy, do you want the bristle bot, the paper circuit, the solar bug, or the sewing kit? Oh, did we lose Cindy? I'm not sure she's here. She was. Oh, yeah. he said okay. So can you mark down that the bristle bot is gone? All right, Cindy, you are our first winner. All right, so I just auto generated a number in Google and my next number was 24 and that is Sarah Roberts. So Sarah, you are our second winner. So now you get to pick, do you want the paper circuit, the sewing circuit or the, what am I missing? Paper, what did I say? Paper circuit, sewing circuit or solar bug? Okay, Sarah says solar bug, please. I'm a fan of the solar bug since that was mine. Awesome. All right, two more to go. I got to auto generate again. Hang on. All right, 11. And that is. Um, that is Katie Weiss. So, Katie, you are the third winner. Do you want? What do we have left? Paper circuits or sewing circuits?
Oh, okay. Katie's got sewing circuits. So the last person will have the paper circuits. So let me run it one more time. Okay. Got to count. Hang on. And Sean, you are the last winner for today. Sean, you, uh, you don't really get it choice. Sorry, you have paper circuits, but congratulations. We're very happy for you. <laughs> so we will be sending those to you. Uh, we will send you an email just kind of confirming. You'll have to send back to us what your address is that you want us to mail it at. If it's a school address or your home address, and we'll, we'll get that to you. Oh, Sean. Uh, well, we'd still have his email in the registration. So I can get some. Oh, is there only one Sean? Yes, there is only one Sean. Yeah. Got it. Okay, so that brings us to the end of our session today. Um, I told you it was really different than what we normally do, but I hope you had fun with it. Uh, we are going to be back uh, in the fall with a whole new series of free monthly webinars. We're looking at doing some really new and different things. So we'll still have some technology tutorials and uh, some teaching things, but we'll also have some interviews and we'll have some other live builds of other things that we're going to be doing in the near future. So we're really excited. Uh, we hope that you'll join us. But before that, we hope that you take a really well-deserved summer. Uh, I just did a blog post all about what the 2022 or 2021-22 school year was like. Um, I heard from you all and I know it was rough. I haven't been in the classroom in two years and, and I'm really, um, my heart goes out to you all for the, the struggle that this year was. But we hope that you have a fantastic summer. We'll be back in September. If you are interested in bringing Brown Dog Gadgets to your classroom or learning space, please reach out to us. We'll be happy to help you. And we'll see you in the next school year.